Hello and welcome to the 3D printed classroom. Today's spirit week at my school, so I hope that explains my festive garb. Today I'm going to be talking about math manipulatives and how you can use your 3D printer to improve your instruction. First up, we have our fraction circles. If you're an elementary school teacher, you are using likely some fraction circles. I've taught fifth grade, I've taught third grade so far, and darn it. What's great about the 3D versions of these is that they are much more durable than these cheap little paper ones. The lamination comes undone, they're easy to get lost, and they're just aren't the greatest thing. So the 3D printed fraction circles, what's great about these is one, they're easy to reproduce. I can get uh, a whole new set in a day. I can just print them out. They're very quick and easy. They're durable. They aren't going to break. I really like that it comes with this tray. This is a, a fantastic way. It feels more like a puzzle. It feels like a they're solving something, and when they click into place, it is much more satisfying for the student. It feels like, yes, I am certain that four-fourths equal one whole. And it is very satisfying, getting these to all just fit in so nicely. My one wish would be that the designer of this on Thingiverse include more fractions. Uh, I'm in third grade and the students, they need to work with fractions up to um, 1 12th or 1 15th. And so having more options would be great. I was working on this, I was working with these uh, fraction circles with the student this morning. I gave him a challenge, I said, I want you to figure out uh, if you can fit all of these pieces or one piece at least from each fraction circle into this. Can you make one whole using a fourth, a third, an eighth, and a sixth? And so he played around with that and he put a third in and a fourth and he was, oh, the eighth wouldn't fit and he was like, this is impossible. He tried it in different ways, took them out, put them back in, but he figured it out. Well, if you use two eighths, if you use one of those equivalent fractions, you can make it work. It's a lot of fun. Students really enjoy this math manipulative, even more so than the paper ones. Why? I do not know. Up next, we have Tetris. No, we have cube nets. Now, I have not used these yet. Uh, our geometry unit is coming up shortly, but I'm looking forward to letting kids play around with these in small groups and some one-on-one -on -one instruction. I love these though. This is, uh, we have three examples of nets and three examples of non-nets. What's cool though is that it's not just the picture. Uh, you have an actual object that can be folded up into a real cube. It's fantastic. It's a great way for students to get their hands on geometry and to create some real nets and see, oh, Wait a second, this isn't quite possible to create a net with. Students will learn that, you know, although it might have the correct amount of sides to make a cube, it might not be in the right order to make a cube. Now, I don't know how sturdy these are. It's fairly thin and plastic fatigues. How durable are they? I'm not sure. But they're, they're a, a very small amount of plastic. They should be able to, uh, you can print out several of them. Or, I mean, if you get really desperate and you won't, don't want to waste the plastic, you can always uh, tape them back together. That is just fine. The only problem is if you don't have fingernails, they can be a little bit, a little difficult to get up. And if you're an elementary teacher, you are doing work with nets you might even use magniformers to have students build nets, but even uh, this could be a, a pretty good um, 
formative assessment for you to give students. Have them come up, have them uh, choose which ones could be used to make a cube and which ones can not. Up next is this. I don't know really what to call this, but I'll tell you one thing, my students love it. Uh, they've been using it for, hello. One of my students is looking into my room wondering what is Mr. McInerney doing? What's up, man? You can make it as large or as small as you want. There's an axis that you print, it's printable, it goes through the middle, and you could add uh, more of these pieces, uh, fewer of these. But what's great about it is that students are able to uh, create equations all on their own. So we have nine plus one equals 10. It is handy for teaching place value is having all of these values, you know, students have turned this in, I let them play with it and they might turn it in and they says one plus nine equals one thousand. I'd say, no, 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 no. That's not the right answer. They say, why not? Well, there's 10, it's 10, that's what I put. Well, no, that's a one thousandths place. So you have one, one thousand, and zero tens. So it is good for teaching place value to students. Not only can you, uh, they work with addition, there are spots for multiplication, subtraction, and division. Furthermore, you can uh, talk about the inequality. You can have a negative. You can have less than or equal to, or wait. Uh, yes, less than or equal to, less than, greater than, and greater than and equal to. For those kids that want to have something in their hands to work on when they're doing math, this is a fantastic tool. All right, so most of my manipulatives so far have been for elementary school, um, although this one could probably be used with older kids. Uh, I did, I wanted to incorporate something for middle school or I guess maybe high school, I don't know. When do kids learn the Pythagorean theorem? Well, this is a great visual way for kids to understand it. When I was in middle school or high school, I remember learning a squared plus b squared equals c squared, but that's a hard thing to appreciate. What's so awesome about this is that it shows kids that it is physically true. It is not just some neat mathematic trick. If you added the area of this length, the square of this length, or the square of that length, it will undoubtedly equal the square area of the hypotenuse. Visually, I find that fascinating and I think it would help make the, the Pythagorean theorem click for a lot of students. All right, so that is it. Some of my favorite math manipulatives that you can find online and print on your classroom 3D printer. Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in watching more of my videos, you can hit subscribe and it'll like update you on them or something. Um, thanks so much for watching. I wonder if I could get these all to stay. I can't.